Red Dawn stillness over Siberia's Tunguska River Valley was shattered at 7.17 a.m. as a searing blue orb, brighter than a thousand suns, ripped through the sky. Farmer Semyon Semenov staggered on his porch in Wanabara, 65 kilometers from Ground Zero. His shirt scorching like paper in a furnace, heat like a bakery oven, he gasped before a deafening roar threw him to the ground. Windows exploded for miles as shockwaves circled the globe twice. Across the taiga, Tanga's nomads were hurled through the air. Reindeer herds vaporized mid-grace, metal tools melted in tents, yet miraculously no humans died. By afternoon, black rain fell from choked skies while nights across Europe glowed eerily. Londoners read newspapers at midnight without lamps. Seismographs from Jakarta to New York registered the largest non-volcanic tremor in recorded history. But in revolutionary Russia, newspapers buried the event. For 19 years, Siberia's enigma lay frozen in silence, until a meteor-obsessed scientist gambled his life to find the answers. Leonid Kulik's 1927 expedition battled blizzards and skeptical Soviet officials to reach the dead zone. Local Evanki tribes warned of Ogdi, the fire god who cursed the land. Do not wake the angry sky, elders whispered. Kulik pressed onward, until his horses refused to go farther, but he found defied reason. A 2,150 square kilometer graveyard of 80 million trees snapped like matchsticks. Radiating outward in a butterfly wing pattern, the silence was suffocating. No birds, no insects just the crunch of glassy charcoal under boots. At the epicenter, a grove of skeletal pines stood upright, bark stripped, wood flash cooked to charcoal, amid swampy craters where permafrost had vaporized. Kulik's compass spun widely in the magnetic chaos. No crater, no meteorite, just absence, he scrawled in his journal. The only clues, ozone clinging to dead brands, and reindeer hides scarred by ghostly burns. Kulik's findings ignited global speculation. British astronomer Francis Whipple proposed a comet, a dirty snowball vaporizing 8 km up explaining the glowing skies and lack of debris. Soviet physicist Astapovich calculated its angle of entry, 30 degrees, speed 100,000 km per hour. Then in 1946, sci-fi writer Alexander Kazantsev dropped a bombshell, an alien nuclear craft. He noted chilling parallels to Hiroshima, standing trees at ground zero, radiation like burns? In 1958, Nobel chemist Willard Libby tested Siberian larches. Their rings showed the 1908 carbon-14 spike evidence of cosmic radiation. Mutant pines grew five times faster near the epicenter, leaves twisted into claws. Tungus elders described lesions like invisible fire on surviving reindeer. Skeptics demanded proof. Where was the wreckage? The reactor? The truth lay buried in radioactive peat. As the Cold War raged, Tunguska became a raw shock test for fears. Astrophysicist Jackson and Ryan proposed a microscopic black hole piercing Earth but no Atlantic exit wound matched the blast. John Baxter's the fire came by. 
Detailed heat fused quartz tectines, identical to nuke test sites, reigniting UFO theories. Breakthroughs finally came from beneath the bog. Italian scientists mapped Lake Chekhov's cone shaped depths in 2007, claiming a meteorite fragment. But sediment proved it predated 1908. In 2013, Ukrainian researchers sieved century old peat near Ground Zero, revealing microscopic spheres of iron nickel alloy from beyond Mars. Cosmic Sharapnel, they declared. ESA computer models confirmed a stony asteroid exploding with 15 megatons of force, 1000 Hiroshima's, yet leaving only atomic dust. One hundred and seventeen years later, Tunguska paradox endures. A blast that erased forests but spared humans, that scorched earth yet birthed mutant blooms, charred tree rings still pulse faintly on Geiger counters, a whisper of celestial violence. We've mapped comets and split atoms, yet Siberia's mystery defies closure. Was it a warning? A 200-meter space rock detonating by chance? Or, as Kazantsev dreamed, a star favor sacrifice? The evidence whisper contradictions. Cosmic diamonds forged in the blast, yet no impact. Radiation scars, yet no fallout. Perhaps the deepest truth lies in the craters or labs. But in Semenov's chalk testimony, the sky ripped. In our age of asteroids and AI, Tunguska remains a haunting riddle of power and mercy, a reminder that from the void anything could fall. And next time, will the sky spare us?